This is the difference in ceramics. So when someone walks up and goes, yeah, well, ceramics, hollow sphere. No, no, you can use some hollow spheres. They're pretty good, but there's not one ceramic compound that we studied that could do it all. And you had to have a combination working together to make it work correctly. Hi, I'm J.E. Pritchett, uh, president and formulator for SPI Coatings uh, in Kansas. And I was asked the other day uh, about ceramics and uh, ceramic compounds. And uh, the reason was that um, most people get the idea and, and have been told that maybe hollow spheres or something like that is the only kind of ceramics that's used in, in coatings to reflect heat, block heat, whatever. And um, so I decided that I would make a short video uh, to let you know that in ceramic compounds, there are, well, I have studied over about 4,000 compounds in 32 years, and it, but it all started with Supertherm, <clears throat> which is our reflective coating uh, that we use on roofing and walls. But that, uh, the study of ceramics began with NASA in 1989, and I worked with NASA from 89 to 95, and then where I was a speaker in 1995 at their conference on Supertherm and what it could do for reflecting uh, radiational heat from the sun. But the process for six years was to study ceramic compounds. Everybody seems to have a book, <clears throat> or can find a book or online, uh, of what a ceramic is. And there's a lot of ceramics out there. And ceramics, by the way, is a general term that used from glass beads to uh, some kind of clay materials to plastics and everything else. So it's a very general term that's used. And, but what we were doing with uh, the engineers with NASA at the time was uh, I was the researcher, designated researcher, and we went through their book, which had uh, all these ceramic compounds, and we picked out the 17 or 18 best ones they had in the book. And in dry state, which ones actually stopped heat from loading into this side and transferring to the other side. And so we thought, okay, these are the ones. So I made up a paint uh, base, and we tested them in the paint base after testing the, uh, first of all, the metal plate, and then the paint base on the metal plate to how much heat was blocked, and then mixing in these dry ceramics, which were the best in the book. But as we mixed them in and tested them, it didn't seem to work, so we added more. Tested again, didn't work. So we made a paste out of it, put it on, and it still didn't work. Well, a long story short is that you can take the best ceramics that's in a book somewhere and talk about this thing is the greatest. Well, I had the greatest, and we make the, they make the tiles for the shuttle and things like this, high heat situations, and, uh, and use these uh, ceramics in that process. But, <clears throat> The whole point here is that in dry state, it works. What if you mix it into a paint product or coating with other materials and then try to use it, kills it. And that's what we found out. So in when someone is uh, saying, well, we use ceramics and all this kind of stuff, they uh, will take something off the internet. They will take a supplier's uh, report that in dry state, we test it. Boy, this thing's great. Uh, well, we, I did that with NASA. So I will take NASA over any of these other guys. And what we found out in all that testing was that no, you're gonna have to try each and every compound individually to see how it's going to respond inside of a wet product. A paint mixed with other materials, does it still work or not? 
And that's the point. So in the ceramic compounds, there's about five uh, categories right there that, that make up, that make a ceramic uh, work or not work. But the, the, the material makeup, in other words, the mined material and or a made up material, whatever it might be, uh, is that, does that work? Then you have a crystalline structure in that material. And this is what we learned in the six years working with NASA, is that the crystalline structure plays a very important role because it can take, especially on the radiation heat side, it can refract and uh, like dielectric glass. And you take that and you throw it off and uh, divert the heat waves, things like that. Then it's the process method. You might take that same material and it's okay, but it works better if it goes through a particular process to change the form a little bit. And you got to, you got to understand and know that. Then the size is, uh, is essential. And the reason for that is that if you're catching waves and heat waves and radiation waves and uh, gamma rays or any, anything like that, it comes down to can you block that wave at that size? And so size does matter and it uh, is used very much in the, in the coatings. Then in, in density, density is very important because the, it's like a plate or a coffee cup or something like that. Uh, that's, uh, you can make engines with it, a car engine, and it never wear out. But you put your hand on it, you're gonna burn your hand off. So we're talking about extreme lightweight density ceramics that can't physically absorb heat. Like you take your car hood, it's a white car, it's a car hood out in the sun on a 90 degree day uh, Fahrenheit, and you touch that car hood, you're gonna burn your hand. Well, it's white. Yeah, well, white doesn't mean much. Uh, white is can reflect, uh, now, visual light. Now, listen to that. It reflects visual light, some of it, not all of it. Well, visual light is just a light bounce. Where's the heat? Well, the heat went and went through the white paint and absorbed into that metal surface. And when you touched it, that metal is very hot. So just because something's white means nothing much. And especially if it's over metal or something like this. So it's going to absorb. But you take a piece of paper, you lay it outside and you touch it. And it's like, well, I feel a little warmth, but it's never going to get hot because there's no density there. So if you take ceramics at about 50 times lighter weight in that piece of paper, it physically, just like the paper, physically doesn't have the body to absorb heat and hold on to it so that when you touch it, it's hot. It reflects it back off and that's called emissivity, but it releases it back to the atmosphere as quickly as it tries to absorb into it, it throws it back off. So what you're going to find in tech, technical sheets on any materials that you might be checking out is uh, what's the material makeup. It'll, they'll tell you what the material is. Uh, then they'll tell you the size and the density. But the things they don't tell you, the two most important things is uh, what's the crystalline structure? And what do you mean by that? They don't know because it's not there. Uh, and how, what's the uh, process method and what are you talking about? They don't know that either. So there are some things that are processed that makes that material work because that material should work by itself. But if it's processed a certain way, it will work. That on ceramics, when I said earlier, the makeup, the crystalline structure and that sort of thing, you've got certain ceramics that can take on radiational uh, heat waves from the sun and they come in and they take it and they reflect it back off or try to block that wave. And, uh, and that way you kind of, you got an emissivity going on, reflectivity also, and throwing it back off because it's, uh, it's catching waves. It's working on those waves coming off. 
All right, that's one kind of ceramic. And then you have other, other type of ceramics that's made uh, more specifically for hot pipes, uh, generation units, uh, heat exchangers, things like this that's hot and you want to hold that heat in that unit. Well, now you can't use a reflective ceramic for that because that's physically impossible. That heat's coming off of that surface and you're thinking you're going to take a reflective ceramic and throw that heat back into that surface. Well, so let's just say that surface is 300 degrees and by the time it comes off, let's say it's 298. You can't take 298 heat and throw it back into 300. That's physically impossible. It won't allow that to happen. So you must go to other ceramics that's generally there that will not absorb heat, that blocks heat, that resists the heat transfer and holds it right on that surface so that you can insulate that pipe that heat exchanger, whatever we need for the oil fields or heavy industrial or steam pipes or whatever you've got, even race car um, engines where they, uh, where they have uh, exhaust fumes and our exhaust and manifolds that they like to keep hotter so that they can get a pass through the uh, exhaust out of there and not cause turbulence inside the header, uh, which reduces horsepower. And we can coat something like that make it as hot as the exhaust, goes out the tailpipe, and you might improve, which we had uh, one group do, and increased horsepower by six. And um, so it's that sort of thing that you want to hold the heat on the surface. That's not a reflective coating. So don't, uh, don't go into that. And I think we had some, uh, we have thin and thick back over here on this board. And, uh, and there's a reason that they are thin and thick. And there's, a, there's different ceramics making them work for radiational heat and just containing heat. It's two different kinds of ceramic compounds. And you must do trial and error. Anyone that read a book, they read it on when it was dry state. That doesn't mean it works after it's dropped into something wet and mixed with other materials. It's not by itself anymore. This is the difference in ceramics. So when someone walks up and goes, yeah, well, ceramics, hollow sphere. No, no, you can use some hollow spheres. They're pretty good, but there's not one ceramic compound that we studied that could do it all. And you had to have a combination working together to make it work correctly. So that's a quick review of ceramic compounds uh, when we were asked and that's the, that's the study that started with NASA for six years and has continued for another 26 years. And that's how the products that we have are made specifically with ceramics that is specific for that job. That's just like the fire coating we're working on now that takes other types of ceramics. Uh, to withstand uh, a flame at 22, 2300 degrees, something like that. And the force of that flame on the ceramic and it still works. So you can't take a reflective ceramic and put it in a fire coating. It'll just burn right through it. So that's what I'm talking about. Ceramics are different. You must have done trial and error or you don't know what you're talking about. You read it in a book, in dry state it says all this, that doesn't mean anything when you put it into a paint and, uh, and try to use it.